Hello, Simon here, and this is Maya 0.64. There's a lot of new features in this build, but I'm sure most people have come to see the cats and dogs. So there are four new cats in the game from our Kickstarter backers. Uh, they are like any other AI in the game, so they're fulfilling their wants and needs, and they have their metabolism simulated. The cats uh, will go around the base. They won't really interact with much. Um, they might scratch a lot of your furniture, cause some fires. Uh, they improve the mood of the colonists although they'll rarely interact with them. Uh, most of the time the cats will sleep, is what I found, uh, which apparently is an accurate simulation of cat behavior. Um, then of course we have the dogs. The dogs are slightly more useful. Um, they are effectively a defensive AI for your base. So the dogs will walk around the base and they'll look for kind of inputs and different dangers and attack vectors for your base and they'll defend they also walk around and try and maximize their passage past people and the food, of course. The dogs um, will effectively be able to be given move orders, so you can click and drag and the dog will follow that order. They will also remember any orders you give them, so they might decide in future to go back to that place and add it to their own patrol routes. If they come across a creature, they'll also remember to patrol there again. When they do come across a creature, uh, if it's at a distance, they'll start growling at it. And that will give you a warning that a creature has entered your base. Um, they'll, if they get close enough, they'll start barking, and that may actually scare the creature, and the creature will flee. The dogs, of course, also like to have fun, and they'll play around in your base, and your colonists can interact with them and give them tummy rubs and things. And your colonists, of course, will get a bonus from this, and it may increase their happiness. So going back to the alien creatures, uh, as well as these flea behaviors, which will cause them to detect danger and effectively avoid that area again until they believe it's safe. Um, there's also new breeding behaviors and social behaviors for the different aliens. So you'll see pack behaviors and friendships among the more social large creatures, and the nocturnal creatures will um, have their little broods following them and things. And this will actually affect their behavior and what sort of risks they'll take and how quickly they are to panic. So one of the other new features is the hurricanes. Hurricanes are like uh, any of the other danger events. However, unlike the other events, they're much longer lasting. They'll last over a, a day of game time and slowly build up as the hurricane approaches and then leaves again. The hurricanes will cause obviously a lot of damage to your outside equipment. Your wind turbines and the smaller solar panels will actually shut down with the solar panels closing themselves and the wind turbines locking. Uh, to avoid damage during the hurricane, so while you actually get a quite a positive boost while the uh, hurricane is ramping up uh, towards the peak, you'll uh, completely lose all power from those exterior sources of power. So it can be uh, a lot more challenging than some of the current existing events just due to the length and destructiveness of it. It also may cause some of the creatures outside to come try and shelter uh, near your base, and that will also and of course new strange things to happen in the simulation that you weren't expecting. So as well as that we now have new uh, GUI changes in the user interface. So we have these finder menus. Um, while these buttons before would just cycle through the things you now have a visual uh, little bar that you can click through and you can select which colonist or robot you want. The warnings panel used to just cycle through creatures that are near your base. Now it actually gives you contextual information about the dangers and the things that you need to be thinking about to uh, help your base. So this stops you having to constantly be reading through some of the longer emails to get to find out what your colonists are doing. Although I still do recommend reading the emails as they give a lot more information than just this little bar. Next up is the engine and rendering things itself. I've actually rewritten a huge amount of the lighting engine uh, a lot of the shaders I've been optimizing. So what you'll see is it will run a little bit smoother. It will run a lot faster. Um, the, some of the effects will look a lot nicer. Um, the game is generally just a little bit brighter and when bloom does happen, it's a little less aggressive. I've also implemented a lot of Nick's lovely sound work into the game that I hadn't made it in before. So you notice a lot of new little sound effects, you'll hear creatures calling out in the night outside, uh, things like the geothermal power generator having a nice hum to it. The airlock also has some really nice new sounds. 
and it also has doors on it now, which I know a lot of people in the comments uh, had issues with before. Although, really it wouldn't matter because obviously they're generating air inside the base so they'll be producing positive pressure. There's not a vacuum outside so it wouldn't actually suck out the uh, air out the base. Um, but yeah, visually the uh, airlock is now how it was intended. One of the other cool new features is auto saves in the game. So I think every 12 minutes or so the game will save. And that means you don't have to worry so much if you accidentally nuke your base with lava. So I think I've talked about everything that I wanted to cover in this video. There's obviously a lot more to discover, a lot more little optimizations, new text, a uh, lot little bits of content here and there. Uh, I'll let you guys discover them. Um, I hope you like the changes, and I'll be back soon with more. I will see you guys soon. Bye.